now what I'm doing, I am cleaning up all my little scraps, putting it into my 12x12 paper studio envelope that I purchased at Hobby Lobby, and I am grabbing two of my spray bottles that I purchased at Amazon, because I'm going to pour the remainder mixtures that I had left over from the avocado and the coffee. That is some rubbing alcohol, and I put about a teaspoon to two teaspoon into the bottle to preserve it, have a longer shelf life and it, it saves you some time and you don't have to constantly be boiling coffee or avocado especially if you want something on hand immediately and I actually out of the one avocado um, I had three bottles that I, I actually pulled out of that so I'm going to be using that in the near future okay so here I just took a kitchen mat that I use for crafting and I have sprayed some of the coffee and avocado and I'm using a iron that I specifically purchased just for my crafting needs and it was less than ten dollars at Walmart so you want to hold your iron straight on and you don't want to move it around like you would when you're ironing clothes you want to make sure you leave it there for a couple seconds before you lift up because otherwise you'll tear into your paper so just hold it down for a few seconds leave it there for about five ten seconds and then just move it to the next spot it's fairly easy and you really do get a nice effect from it you just have to have I think personally you have to have a lot more patience so here I have taken some of the papers that we have coffee dyed this is the grid paper or the graph paper and I'm just ironing it out some people like to do this I don't have um, I really don't like doing it this way I like the effects that you get from the baking but I just did it for you guys to see that you can iron your paper. You just want to make sure you have an old towel or one of those kitchen mats that you use for your dishes. Again, here's some of the book pages that we used um, for the kit. And I'm just ironing out. Now this is the book cover pages for the album. And as you can see, I have started to sew them. I basically took the... Um, back of a scissors and started to distress the edges and then I took a contrasting color which is black and went to the sewing machine and made some random stitches. Now this is the perfect time when you don't have to be the perfect seamstress which I am not definitely and I like this uh, technique because I don't have to be perfect and I don't have to have a perfect stitch and that is the most unique thing that you can do in junk, junk journaling is that you can have random zigzag lines, crazy stitching, and no one's ever going to judge you because that's just exactly what gives the junk journals a unique look. So there you go. I'm showing you some of my crazy stitching. Again, like I said, I am not a seamstress. I do not care to be one. <laughs> I kind of like I kind of like doing the zigzag, so I do that. I do do that intentionally. I move the um, the needle around so I can get zigzags, zigzag stitches. Yeah, and I leave the threads. That's what I'm saying right there. Is that I leave the threads hanging because it gives it more character. Um, you can trim off any of the extra extra long, like I just did there. But for the most part, you want to leave the threads hanging. pretty cool I like it and if you don't want to sew that's perfectly okay that's entirely up to you you can do whatever you want with these um, if you want to sew on them you can sew on them if you don't you can just leave them as is and I'm just explaining right there that I'm going to go to the sewing machine go around the edges and then I'm going to go into the spine area pretty simple Now once you've sewn all your edges um, on your paper, again, here's where you can take your scissors or you can do it beforehand, whichever, and you can distress the edges as best as you want or, or not. I just take a scissors and distress it. Now you can take your Tim Holtz vintage photos, this is what I'm using, or any distressing and you can go around the edges. What I like about the glass mat is that I can stretch the life of the um, ink. I can go around, put a little bit in the ink, uh, a little bit of the ink on the mat and spread it through. So you waste less of your ink. Be 
sure to distress your little scraps that you had from your inside pages because we will be using them for patchwork. So make sure you distress them. Once all your pages are um, inked up, you can clean your glass mat with a baby wipe and make sure you save that baby wipe because you can actually make some really nice flowers with that. Now we're going to start cutting out our ephemeras from the kit and let me tell you, that is a very tedious, time consuming job but someone has to do it, right? Now, if you do have a silhouette or a brother scanning cut, I do know that those devices allows you to scan. Um, I know with uh, the silhouette you have to have the pick scan and I do have a silhouette Cameo 3. However, I have not taken the time to learn how to use it. My husband brought me a used one. And it didn't come with a manual, but I'll get there somewhere. Sometime, sooner or later. So if you have one of those devices, you can absolutely scan these up and cut them with your machines. Or you can do what I did, which is uh, fussy cut those with uh, scissors. It takes, a, it takes a while, but... Some people find it relaxing. I tend to grind my teeth, like I almost like jo uh, lock my jaws when I'm doing this, especially when I'm doing some really intricate cuts. So, um, yeah, not something I am a fan of doing. So right now, I'm just probably explaining to you guys um, how you can cut these up with your um, scanning cut so I notice that um, when I am cutting the bigger ephemeras I use bigger shears or bigger scissors and then when I get around the really tiny intricate parts I try to use smaller scissors and that's because you get a better cut and more precision or precise cutting when you're using the smaller ones so keep that in mind I'm sure you guys probably already know that but that's just me and this is partly when I'm grinding or locking my jaw because I'm like oh I can't cut this wrong <laughs> So as I'm cutting, as you can see, I am um, cutting all the ephemeras, the pockets, the envelopes, and I'm setting them aside in little piles. I have a pile for the tags, a pile for the envelopes, and a pile for the miscellaneous ephemeras. And I just try to keep them organized that way so that when I do start to ink, I have them all ready to go. For the record, my hand movements here is just I'm really into that music, and so I got into it, and I thought, yeah, I don't think the ladies want to hear me singing, especially with my raspy voice right about now. But I enjoyed it, and um, it was pretty fun. <laughs> it made the time fly really fast when I was fussy cutting, and I didn't mind it as bad. So we've come to an end as far as fussy cutting for this project and now we're going to put everything together.